In December 2021, NASA and other collaborative international space agencies plan to launch the $10 billion James Webb Telescope, or for short, Webb. This massive project, believed to be the successor to the aging Hubble Space Telescope, will help us go to a place that the Hubble could only dream of. The Webb will help us peer back to a time shortly after the Big Bang, roughly 100 to 250 million years after, when the young universe was just beginning to form its very first galaxies. This look into the past may help transform scientists' understanding of the structure of our universe. Additionally, Webb will be able to observe planets outside of our own solar system, allowing us to get a better understanding of Earth-like exoplanets and their atmospheres. For example, Webb in collaboration with ground-based telescopes will be able to gather the mass as well as the atmospheric composition of some of these alien worlds. This will allow us to determine what type of planet it is, as well as whether it shows the certain characteristics needed for life to form. So how can Webb accomplish this? Well, the Webb will be an orbiting infrared observatory, capable of observing the thermal radiation from a wide range of space objects. Infrared light is a form of light invisible to the human eye, that we interpret as heat. An example of a nearby infrared source is our sun. This capability to observe an in infrared will allow Webb to peer straight through many of the dust clouds within our own galaxy. Unlike the Hubble, which orbits Earth, the Webb will be situated at a point orbiting the Sun. This will allow little interference from Earth on Webb's sensors. The point where Webb will orbit is a special one, known as the second Lagrange point, or L2. The special physics associated with this point allow the Webb to stay in line with the Earth allowing easy communication while still orbiting the Sun. Orbiting here also allows Webb to be fully protected from the light and heat of our Sun, as well as the light emitted from our Earth and Moon. The L2 point is about 1.5 million kilometers away, or roughly 1 million miles. For comparison, this is about four times the distance from the Earth to the Moon, meaning once Webb is situated, it will be very hard to repair it like we've been able to with the Hubble. Because of this fact, Webb's design had to be carefully thought out over the last 20 years. To be able to peer back into the infancy of our universe, the Webb's primary mirror must be large enough to gather the very dim light emitted from our cosmos. This powerful machine houses a 21.4 foot primary mirror, composed of 18 hexagonal components, giving the Webb a light collecting area of 25 square meters. One notable aspect of Webb's mirrors is its honeycomb-like structure. In construction of these mirrors, a special type of beryllium was used to protect the mirrors from cryogenic temperatures. The gold color of the mirror comes from a 100 nanometer thick coating of pure gold. This coating best allows the reflection of infrared light. In comparison with its predecessor, Hubble, Hubble's main mirror is only 7.87 feet. These mirrors, along with the highly sensitive infrared detectors, give Webb a surface area that would be able to fit seven Hubble telescopes. Although Webb is remarkably larger in size, it weighs only 6.2 tons compared with Hubble's 11 tons. The massive increase in light collecting ability the Webb offers will allow scientists to see objects up to 100 times dimmer than what is currently possible with ground and space-based telescopes. In order to make full use of its infrared detectors, Webb must be shielded from our sun, as well as Earth and Moon. Engineers tackled this problem by developing the largest component of Webb, a five-layer sun shield, which when fully extended, spans to about the size of a tennis court. This sun shield will provide a near 600 degree Fahrenheit difference in temperature from one side of Webb to the other. You'd be able to cook food on one side of Webb, while water would instantly freeze on the other. The cold temperature is essential for Webb to gather the most detailed infrared light from newly forming stars, as well as the most distant galaxies. Because of Webb's size, it took a lot of planning to try to ensure a safe deployment into space. In order to get this infrared observatory to space, it must be folded into sections before launch. It will then unfold in space to its full size on a 30-day schedule as it makes its way out to the L2 orbit point. This origami-like folding makes Webb the first segmented optical system ever sent to space. 
The goal of Webb is to examine every phase of cosmic history, from moments after the Big Bang to the formation of the first galaxies and stars. It will accomplish this through four main instruments aboard the telescope. First, the Near Infrared Camera, or NIRCAM, will detect light from the earliest galaxies and stars, as well as young stars within our own Milky Way. Second, the Near Infrared Spectrograph, or NIRSPEC, will aim to study nearby exoplanets in hopes of uncovering their physical properties such as temperature, mass, and chemical composition. Third, the Min Infrared Instrument, or MIRI, will allow it to see the red-shifted light of distant galaxies, newly forming stars, and faintly visible comets, as well as objects in the Kuiper Belt. Fourth, the Fine Guidance Sensor and Near Infrared Imager and Slitless Spectrograph, or FGS-NIRISS. The FGS will allow Webb to point precisely so that it can obtain high-quality images. It does this through controlling the steering of the scope and its mirrors. The NIRISS will help with first light detection, exoplanet detection and characterization, and exoplanet transit spectroscopy. With hopes of launching in December of this year, NASA is collaborating with the European Space Agency. The Webb will be aboard the Ariane 5 and will launch out of the Guiana Space Center. If all goes according to plan, the Webb will be in operation for at least 5 to 10 years. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to like and subscribe. Comment what discoveries you're looking forward to the most, and as always, thanks for following along as we try to uncover the mysteries of our cosmos.